What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Or welcome to your first time here. If you like videos about prepping and survival and want to stay on top of what's going on here on this channel, then be sure to subscribe to notifications so I'll be notified each time that I upload a brand new video. You know, we've been talking about the cyber attacks that's coming for a couple of years now on this channel. And I've talked about before in two different videos about the the fact, in my opinion, that a cyber attack take, that takes down the power grid is much more likely to happen than an EMP attack that takes down the power grid. We could get both, who knows, but I think much more likely to have those cyber attacks, and I've covered that in other videos. And a lot of people didn't, had never heard of, they heard of cyber attacks but didn't know how much damage it could actually do to our critical infrastructure in the United States. You know, the banking system, the complete financial system, the power grid, communications, things like that could be taken down pretty quickly by well-placed, well-planned, well-funded cyber attack on the United States. But the movie, Leave the World Behind, came out and... Now everyone is pretty much talking about this cyber attack possibility and this whole grid down situation that that movie portrayed. It put it in people's thoughts and it showed people what could actually happen for the most part. You know, it's dramatized as far as the movie thing goes, but it definitely could cause a lot of havoc here in the United States. And this article here from the DailyMail.com talks about just that. Cyber expert reveals how Chinese hackers could cripple America and turn the hit, leave the world behind, movie nightmare into reality. You only know war has begun when the phones go out. And in this article, they talk about China and Russia being the main threats. And in my opinion, that's not correct. I think there's many more threats than that, including our own deep state here in the United States. And these globalists want to take over the world and put in their 2030 globalist agenda. The central bank digital currencies, the social credit score system, all the technocratic spying infrastructure, just like China has right now, they want here in the United States and actually around the world. And that could be a perfect opportunity to do that. It would be a massive cyber attack when you bring it back up. That would be one of the stipulations for bringing this back up to make sure it never happened again. But anyway, this article goes on. The film portrays a modern world in collapse, an unknown phenomenon, a foreign cyber attack, interstellar force, or global cabal, That'd be more likely what it would be a global cabal. Knocks out vital U.S. infrastructure and for some unexplained purpose plunges America into a nightmare. Barack Obama, that ought to make some people's ears get big. <laughs> Barack Obama's production company is behind the movie and its director says the former president was able to ground me a little bit on how things might unfold in reality. He probably got grounded, though, right? Like Michael gets every night. Anyway. I mean, one of those movies of like guys to try to make this video funny. And just to put it out there on the line and just say, what are coming to my mind? And that came to my mind, so it came out of my mouth. Anyway. Does this dystopia have the stamp of presidential approval? Could any of this reality happen? In short, yes. And it definitely could. Not, you know, like... The movie portrayed as far as the animals running around crazy and things like that, but the power grid going down, infrastructure, communication going down, that's definitely a possibility. China and Russia are the only adversarial nation states with the military and cyber capability to conduct total global warfare, and I disagree with that totally. Like I said a minute ago, others could definitely do this, but they're trying to already in this article here precondition everyone to automatically assume Russia and China because that's who's going to be blamed for this. More than likely, Russia. These enemies of America don't need to bring down passenger planes or sabotage super tankers to trigger mayhem. Hackers affiliated with the Chinese military have already reportedly digitally infiltrated critical U.S. infrastructure, including a water utility facility in Hawaii, a West Coast port, and an oil and gas pipeline, according to the Washington Post. Recall the panic set off by the Russian-linked ransomware group DarkSide attacking the Colonial Pipeline on May 7, 2021. The oil delivery system is the largest of its kind in the U.S. carrying 45% <clears throat> of the East Coast fuel supply. News channels showed images of cars lined up for miles as gas stations from Virginia to Florida ran dry and were forced to close. North Carolina declared a state of emergency. It didn't matter that the attack only lasted a few days, it didn't matter that the oil supply wasn't lost or the government was cautioning everyone to stay calm. The fear was real, and that's a 
precursor to bringing a nation to its knees, terrorism. China's President Xi Jinping recently warned President Biden that it's its intention to reunify Taiwan with the Chinese mainland. If Beijing does decide to invade the island nation, then expect the Chinese armed forces to seek to bog the United States down in a domestic crisis. Their first wave of disruption would likely target large population centers like New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, and or the Philippines. Or Philadelphia, sorry guys, can't say. Taking out power to 100 homes would generate little interest and have negligible impact. The goal of a power attack is to cause massive disruption and create the conditions to overwhelm public safety and the response of federal authorities. Perhaps the Chinese would take a page out of Russia's cyber playbook. See, he's going from Chinese to Russia, China to Russia. December 23rd marked the eight years since Russia attacked Ukraine's power grid with their black energy malware, a malicious computer virus that shut down the country's energy supply. The cyber attack took out power to over 250,000 homes and affected hundreds of thousands of people. Black energy was launched by an email created to look like it came from the Ukrainian parliament. When opened, the email's attachment, a Word document, gave the attackers access to the system that's why i don't open any attachments in email so if you send an attachment to email your email gets automatically deleted because that's the way hackers work they send these emails these attachments acting like they are companies and things like that you click on that and then take over your computer take over your youtube channel and things like that we don't want that to happen so i don't open any of those type attachments the Russian malware made it impossible for the Ukrainian engineers and technicians to control the electrical grid. Power at the main facilities, along with backup power, was completely disrupted. The computers controlling the utilities management were wiped clean and could not be rebooted. And guys, down here it talks about the fact that the United States launched a cyber attack against Iran in 2006. That's been going on for a long time. And we talk about Russia and China and the United States. That's the same thing, cyber warfare. And they can do it to us just the same here and say it was someone else, put digital footprints on someone else's. Uh, to, so they point to someone else and say, look over here, we got proof. It was them, it was those guys over here. It wasn't us that did this, but we had to take full total control of the internet and the banking system and the whole critical infrastructure, full total control of everything, especially the internet, currency and everything. You have to give us all these powers so we can bring this back up and fix this so this never happens again. We never have this chaos again. But one thing I've noticed, I'm going to shift gears here. One thing I've noticed about pretty much everyone talking about this cyber attack that's coming on these prepping channels, they're just talking about the fact that it definitely could be coming and most likely is and the possibilities. And he to stock up on food and things like that, which is great advice. However, they failed to mention the fact that when the power grid goes down, the internet goes down, and it's taken down, and it's brought back up, it most likely is not going to be the same as it is now. A lot of the websites are going to be gone, in my opinion. A lot of information is going to be gone, in my opinion, because they want total full control. That's why it's extremely important to have a good survival library. Don't rely on the internet. Don't rely on your cell phone. Don't rely on... Uh, YouTube and things like that for your information. You want hard copy books. I have five books out there that are great, in my opinion. You can check those out. They cover a lot of different topics about prepping and survival. But I'm going to talk about some more books here. I have just a small section of books over here to the side that we're going to talk about. And these are recommended. And this isn't, by any means, you know, a complete survival library. But I think these books here will be a good start to get people started on building that survival library. You need to do that as quickly as possible because knowledge is a great thing to have. And, you know, having books to reference back is great to increase your knowledge, to learn new skills, and to go back and look at things that you might have forgot some of the details on. None of us can remember and know everything right off our head all the time. So having books is definitely great, and it's a great learning tool also. The first one here is... Outdoor Life Ultimate Bushcraft Survival Manual. I actually bought this at the Tractor Supply about two or three years ago, and it was uh, $29, actually. But this is a great book. It has a lot of great diagrams, photographs, and things like that in this book, all about, you guessed it, bushcraft, about hunting, about uh, edible plants, 
about trapping, for example, like that. And this is a great book. It has great, it's about a great material, too, guys. This is a high quality, high quality manual, in my opinion. And it's probably one of the best bushcraft manuals that I've seen. And this here's another one, the Modern Hunter Gatherer, that I recommend. Again, this isn't a total survival library, but it's a good start, I think, in my opinion. Hunting for food. And I'll try to link to these in the description box below so you can check these out when I upload this video. The Vegetable Gardener's Bible. Again, another good book. And all these books are real good quality paper that I'm showing you and have real good quality photographs and things like that. Because I like actual photographs a whole lot better than I like, you know, just line drawings and things like that because photographs are a lot easier to tell what's going on and to learn from. The year-round vegetable gardener. Again, great material, high-quality book with, again, photographs. The Backyard Homestead. And this covers a variety of different topics for you know, being self-sufficient on a small acres and a small homestead. And these next books are all medical. And these are where there is no doctor. Where there is no animal doctor. This is, of course, about goats and rabbits and things like that and pigs and hogs and animals like that. Medical care. Where there is no psychiatrist. And where there is no dentist. I like these because these books are geared toward a prepping situation, to be honest about it. They're talking about it's a geared towards third world countries where it's pretty primitive in these books. And they talk about how to take care of medical issues, first aid, and things like that. And this book does have line drawings, but in this case, you know, it's okay because of the content and because it isn't very, it's not really as advanced for a lot of people would be, but it's basic as far as what you can actually do. Like this here about removing ticks and chiggers and stuff like that, but it has gangrene, uh, infected eyes and newborn babies, pregnancy, lumps of growth in the lower part of the belly and talks what it could be, and it's very basic that anyone can learn from these books like this right here. These where there is no doctor books. And I think this is one of the, these are some of the best books to have, you know, in a prepper library, in my opinion, just because of the basicness of the information, but also effective. And it talks about things that happen in third world countries, which would be the same thing happened in, you know, a collapse type system in the United States. Anyway, if you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. And like I said at the start of the video, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that. And turn notifications on to be notified when I upload a new video. That way, you don't get left out. You don't get left behind. You can subscribe, but if you don't turn notifications on, most of the time, YouTube still won't send those notifications. So be sure to turn notifications on and to subscribe to be notified of new uploads here on my channel. Thanks for watching. and the creep more about here. I'll see you all in the next video. Hopefully.